I've started a new habit recently where I will listen to a cappella church songs as I drive into work going downtown every day. And I found a couple of benefits with that. It puts me in a better mood for the work day, but it also helps me learn the songs in our songbook that I don't yet know very well. Uh, an example of that would be Breathe On Me, Breath of God. That's a song I don't know very well. But a couple of weeks ago, there was a day where, uh, as I was driving down I-24, there was an online meeting about to start. And my work phone was in my hands-free uh, holder. I uh, turned on Bluetooth, I opened up Zoom, and nothing happened. And I was uh, getting a little bit nervous. I started uh, fiddling with some buttons. I accidentally played a couple of so uh, seconds of a song that I had up and then uh, turned that off real quick. And uh, then I got it going. And then once the meeting was going, there was an awkward pause. And the next thing I heard was one of my coworkers saying, are we going to pretend like that didn't just happen? And then uh, the meeting organizer said, I don't know where that came from. And I looked at my work phone and I noticed that the mute button was not turned on on my phone like it normally is. And, and I was concerned, oh no, they just heard the song that I was playing. Uh, while I was trying to connect and I was trying to think, what was it that I was just listening to? And then it occurred to me, it was a bunch of, uh, it was a chorus of ladies singing, breathe on me. <laughs> and I was really embarrassed about that. And I was thinking, I, I really hope that no one figures out that was me. Now there are times when we all do things that we don't want people to know about. And there's a, a popular scam email message that's going around that I want to warn you about that actually deals with this a little bit. And while I'm giving you the details of what this message says, I want you to think about how you would feel if you heard this message. The message goes, hi, I am a hacker and I have hacked into your computer. I have put some spyware on your computer. I have put a key logger on your computer. And with that, I know every single thing that you have typed in. I can pull up your internet browsing history and I know every website that you have ever visited. I know everything that you have done on your device. Even the things that you thought were private, nobody knew about, I know about it. And then I turned on your camera and I took pictures of you doing it. Now, how would you feel if you got a message like that? It continues, I'm about to take all of this evidence and I'm gonna put it on the internet and everyone's gonna see it. Or if you pay me in the next 48 hours, if you give me, normally I would ask for a thousand dollars, but you have such a wild and vivid imagination, I'm only gonna ask you for $700. Well, if you get that message, it's a scam, do not send the money, do not respond to it. In fact, if they had a keylogger on your computer and knew everything you were typing in, they would just look up your bank login information. But they use some psychology on this message because they didn't actually say what it was that you were doing. It just, they left it up to your own imagination. You know what you're doing when you're on your device. And so you know what what it is you've done that you don't want anyone to find out about. And so uh, most people would think of one thing in particular that uh, most people are doing that on the internet that most people don't want about, uh, no one wants to, anyone to know they did it, but there's several things that uh, people could be doing on the internet, such as uh, cyberbullying, calling people to violence. Uh, there might be some inappropriate online relationships. Uh, some people are committing fraud uh, there's a new epidemic that's about to hit our, the teens in this country, and that's uh, online sports gambling. And so there's probably some uh, grandmother out there that is uh, thinking to herself, oh no, I'll, I only wanted to see the Neiman Marcus cookie recipe. And so unlike the things that we do on our, on our device, there are, uh, God knows everything that we do. And if you are uh, burdened by sin, it's not going to cost $1,000 to uh, wipe that away or even $700 or $250 for the Neiman Marcus cookie recipe. 
But I have a couple of verses that I want to read that address uh, this situation of how you can have your burdens lifted. Acts 2.38 is one that we use uh, quite a bit, but it's uh, very important here. Repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if you've never been baptized, that one act is something that you can do that will wipe away all the sins that you have committed. Now, if you already are a uh, Christian, uh, I'd like to read from 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there it lays out how we can confess our sins and have them cleaned away. One thing that has uh, helped me to remind myself to not sin when otherwise I might do that, well, first of all, you know that uh, in the back of your mind, you always know that God is everywhere. He knows everything and can see everything. But of course, we still sin, even though we all know that. And in fact, Jesus knows everything we do. And every time you commit a sin, it's almost like you're taking something else and adding it to the pile of things that he's had to forgive us for. But if you think about the gift of the Holy Spirit, now here's someone, the Holy Spirit is watching you as a Christian commit these things. And if you take a moment and you think about, if I continue doing this, is he no longer uh, going to be with me because I'm not a Christian anymore if I continue down this path of sin. And that's just one thing that I need to think about anytime that I'm about to sin. That's a good reminder to not do that. So if there's any uh, way that we can help you tonight, whether you need to be baptized, whether there's some sins that you need to publicly confess to everybody, or you have any other needs that we as a congregation can help you with, please come now as we stand and sing. <laughs> 